Greetings, everyone. I am P. Pardo from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number four of my favorite 31 albums of the 70s countdown. We've been doing it all month long here in October 2023, 31 days in the month. We're picking out our 31 favorite albums across all genres. Rock, pop, metal, hard rock, prog, classical, jazz, folk, whatever. Whatever it might be. It's all up for grabs. I'm only doing one album per band or artist, but you are, of course, welcome to do as many as you like from your favorites today. So before we even talk about today, <clears throat> there has been a shift in the top of my list. So you know how I've spoken a bit over the last year or so, how sometimes you have your, your favorite bands and your favorite albums. And in some cases, that maybe that favorite album has been your favorite for a long time. And then all of a sudden something happens. Another album that you love a lot by that band, but maybe it was your number two or your number three, all of a sudden falls heavily into favor and overtakes that long-standing album as your favorite. That has happened with one of my picks. It's been coming on for a little. I still love what was my number one pick from this band. And I'm not even going to talk about that band today. I'm giving you kind of a little foreshadowing of what's to come. Uh... There's another album by them that I've always really loved, but in more recent months, even like the last month or two, uh, it's overtaken the other one. And I kind of saw it coming for a while, but it's finally happened. And actually, it wasn't until this morning that I made the switch on my list. Uh, and also, making that switch made me reconfigure my top four albums. Move and they all moved around a little bit. And again, this is based on kind of the last couple of months and just the, the one album in question that really tossed things around uh, has been an almost constant rotation for me of late. And I was like, well, that's doing a little shake up to my list. So, my pick for today is the sixth studio album from this British band, released February 24th, 1975, recorded at studios from all over creation. It's a double album released on Swan Song Records, produced by Jimmy Page. I'm talking about Physical Graffiti from Led Zeppelin. That's right. My favorite double album, double studio album of all time, easily. One of my favorite hard rock albums of all time. It is a great album. Up until today... This was going to be number two on my list. Or was it number three? Number three, actually. Not number, no, it was number three. So it got moved down a peg. Still, you know, top four album is just immense when you really think about it. But uh, more to come on the one that has displaced it and moved up the ladder a few. Because it knocked another one down a notch as well. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, back to this particular album. Of course, you know, Jimmy Page on all sorts of guitars and things, Robert Plant on vocals and harmonica, and John Paul Jones on bass and keyboards, and Mr. John Bonham on drums and percussion with a little uh, additional help from Mr. Ian Stewart on piano on one track. Because, of course, you know, Ian Stewart found his way, ne never a full-time member of any band, but found his way onto many albums during this time period, right? Most notably known as... Uh, Guy that hung around with the Stones quite a bit. So, of course, this is a double album comprised of lots of things written for this album and unused tracks from prior albums. And uh, I got to say, you know, the unused stuff from prior albums are spectacular and fit in so well on this album. And there's a little bit of everything on here. That's one of the main reasons why I love Physical Graffiti so much is it's got it's got the thunder, it's got the gentle stuff, it's got the bluesy stuff, it's got the almost proggy stuff, it's just got a little bit of everything, you know, custard pie, rocks, the rover. It's one of the heaviest songs they ever did. It's one of my favorite Zeppelin songs. Just love it. It's crushingly heavy. In my time of dying, it's got a little bit of everything. So good. Houses of the Holy, which should have been on the Album Houses of the Holy, great song, great fast-paced up-tempo rocker. You got Trampled Underfoot, so funky and just different for the band. You got the mighty, epic, majestic Cashmere, you know, on side three of the violin. You got In the Light, so good, so uplifting. You got Bronway R, you got Down by the Seaside, Laid Back, Bluesy. You got Ten Years Gone over on side four. You know, I got some great rockers on side four. Night Flight, killer. Love the riff on that, the Wanton song. 
killer. Love the riff on that. Heavy. You got Boogie with Stew. You got Black Country Woman. Sick Again. Sick Again is great. Gutsy Blues. Great guitar playing from Jimmy Page. I, I, I just love the variety of this album. And I know I've talked to many people over the years who either hail this as one of the greatest albums of all time and certainly one of the greatest double albums of all time. But I've talked to people who are like, ah, oh, there's so much filler on physical graffiti. I don't see the filler thing. I think everything on here is just perfectly where it needs to be and just so good. And uh, like I said, it's it, whatever style you like from Zeppelin, whether you like the bluesy stuff or the, the heavy rock stuff or the folky stuff or even some of the poppy stuff, you get a little bit of everything on here. The epic stuff, it's all here. Everything's all here. So uh, let's look at uh, charting position, shall we? Yeah, all right. Here we go. Australia, number two. Austria, number two. Canada, number one. Dutch charts, number seven. Finland, five. Germany, four. Italy, 17. Japan, 13. New Zealand, three. Norway, four. Spain, two. UK, one. US, one. And then uh, when the reissue came out in 2015, here we go again. Australia, 13. Austria, seven. Belgium, 13. Danish charts, 31. Finland, 6. France, 23. Germany, 4. Hungary, 3. Italy, 20. New Zealand, 6. Norway, 12. Portugal, 5. Sweden, 7. Switzerland, 8. U.S. Billboard charts, number 11 once again. All right, as far as certifications go, Argentina, gold album, 30,000 units sold. Australia, double platinum, 140,000 units sold. France, gold, 100,000 units sold. Germany, gold, 250,000 units sold. Italy, gold, 25,000 units sold. New Zealand, double platinum, 30,000. UK, double platinum, 600,000. And in the United States, 16 times platinum. 16 times platinum. All right, 8 million units sold. Of course, it's a double album, so usually cut that number in half, right? So yeah, 8 million copies for a double album. It's pretty intense, right? pretty intense this is a, a beloved album by many and uh you know when it was released it sold quite a bit uh do we have and of course you know this is a uh, photograph of 96 st mark's place new york city in greenwich village of course uh trampled underfoot with Black Country Woman on the b-side released as a single april 2nd 1975 crazy how um that is the only single released, right? Even though you got a couple other songs on this album <clears throat> that have been FM classic rock radio staples for ages, including, of course, Cashmere, right? Cashmere, Houses of the Holy, right? There's a whole bunch of songs that have been played on the radio quite a bit over the years, but as official singles, just trampled underfoot. So, anyway, there you have it, folks. <clears throat> Physical Graffiti is my pick for number four. Let us know what you think of this monumental album down in the comments below, as well as your pick for today, pick number four, and we'll see you tomorrow for number three. Till then, this is on the web at www.cutranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts, and please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page, our channel donations, and our merch page, and our Cameo page, so thanks in advance for all your support there, and uh, <clears throat> we'll see you tomorrow for pick number three. Tune in. Let's see. We got uh, ranking the albums. Coming up tomorrow, <clears throat> Grant Arthur and myself will be ranking the catalog of Night Rangers. So till then, I am P. Pardo. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.